All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is titled, Seven Things I Wish I Knew Sooner. Now, I've certainly made my fair share of mistakes thus far in my life, and I say thus far because I certainly will make more mistakes. That is the nature of mankind. We are flawed creatures, meaning we don't always get it right. Today, I'm gonna to touch on some of the things that I wish I knew sooner. So without any further delay, let's get straight into it. The first point is the way that you love isn't necessarily the way that your partner will receive love. Most of us guys, we receive love through physical affection. And we all know what that means, okay? If your woman is getting it on with you, you feel loved. You feel like you are cared about in the relationship because you're intimate. And of course, a lot of women receive love in that way too. But there's a great book that I read called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. And he talks about how people receive love differently. Some women, for example, feel most loved when you are committing acts of service for her. For example, you're picking up the kids from school. You're doing the handiwork around the house. She feels loved in that way. Some women feel loved more when they receive meaningful gifts from their partner. It doesn't have to be expensive. It could just be something that you, you, you came up with that you believed that your girl would like. And that's how she receive, receives love more. So we all lean more towards one category than the other. Okay, and you can have more than one love language, but you kind of lean towards one more than the other. Okay, so that's something that I really only discovered early on in my 20s. I didn't know anything about the five love languages. I thought, you know what, you just love. And if you guys are in love, then you're holding hands and you're having physical affection. And we all know what that means. And that's about it. But I didn't know that people receive love in different ways. So that was a very eye-opening experience for me. Okay, the second point is always say less than necessary. This is a big one, man. The reality is when you're always talking about what's happening in your life, especially some of the intimate details of your life, your financial situation, who you're seeing romantically, a lot of people get into a lot of detail. Oh, he did this, she did that. You're, you are arming people with information about you that can be used against you at some point. A lot of people are no longer in relationships because they opened up too much to people that they thought they could trust. And those people use that information against them. Maybe they told their partner behind their back that he did this or she did that, or they gave this person terrible advice because they don't understand the full context of the situation. Keep it quiet. It's not to say that you can never speak to someone about your problems, but you gotta really make sure that this person is someone that you can trust. But I see so many people nowadays opening up, oh yeah, you know, talking about some personal shit to people that they're, they're not really sure that they can trust, people that they just met, literally. I mean, that's the weirdest one. You've met someone for a couple of days and you tell them everything about your life, all the personal shit. How do you know this person has your best interest at heart? The reality is most people don't have your best interest at heart. But, you know, you are arming the enemy most of the time. You tell someone, I'm thinking of applying to this position. There's one position available at this job. I'm thinking about it before you even do it. This guy's like, okay, where is it? It's there, okay, mm-hmm. And how did you find this position? Oh, I found it on this website. Oh, I hope you get it. This person goes home, applies for the same job, gets it before you. You talked about your fucking plan before you actually executed it. Shh. Get things done first. Then if you want to talk about them, you can. Or at least make sure you've made a lot of fucking progress. Okay, before you start opening your bloody mouth. Okay, and please don't talk about your relationship to most people. Speak to someone that you know can give you good information and they're not biased and they'll keep it real with you. I'm one of those friends to the people in my life that I care about, okay? I'll tell them the truth. I'm not always gonna stick up for them. If they made a mistake, I'm gonna be like, nah, you fucked up, man. You shouldn't have said that to her. That's not right. You gotta apologize. I'm not one of those guys that are like, yeah, break up, break up, because that's the majority of the world today. 
The moment you have a slight inconvenience in your relationship, everybody tells you guys to break up. Stupid. Okay. The next point is never ignore a small problem. And I put small problem in quotations because a little parking ticket doesn't seem like a big deal, especially if you pay it within 14 days. You might pay 40 or 35 pounds or 50 pounds. And you're like, yeah, you know, just, or, or sometimes you're like, oh, I'm not paying that. You get angry. I've been in those situations before where I'm like, no, I'm not bloody paying that. I can't be asked. I'm just angry. I'm being an idiot, essentially. And I forget about it. Three months go by. Huge fine, 400 pounds. I mean, it's just, if I would have fucking paid the 35 pound, I wouldn't have had this 400 pound problem. But because I ignored it, the problem got bigger. It's like a snowball. It starts off at the top of the hill, small. And then as it picks up more snow, it gets bigger. It, it becomes heavier. It rolls down with more speed, more momentum. So the small problem will become a huge problem if you ignore it. It's just like eating as well. You know, you pack on a couple of pounds. You're like, ah, no biggie. I'll lose it. I'll lose it soon. Next month I'll join the gym after I move to this city or after I get this figured out. The next month comes, you've packed on six more pounds. You see, you, you, you delayed it. You delayed going to the gym because you know, I'll, do, I'll do it soon. That small problem of only gaining two pounds has become eight pounds total worth of extra weight that you now have to fucking get rid of. So don't ignore a small problem, it will magnify. The next point is argue against the problem, not against each other. In relationships, remember, it's you two versus the problem at hand. It's not you and her fighting each other. That is not a healthy relationship. And the majority of people, unfortunately, today are enemies in the same household. Oftentimes, two enemies sleeping in the same bed. They fucking can't stand each other. They say some hurtful shit towards each other, thinking that that will teach him a lesson. It doesn't. It makes that person feel unloved. It makes that person feel like they're not enough. They're not being listened to. They don't matter, which often, of course, consequently leads to a breakup. Communicate properly together. I talk about this in my videos quite a lot, the whole concept of conflict resolution, okay? argue in a healthy manner. Of course you're going to argue. There's no way that two people can coexist in an environment and not butt heads from time to time. You will. Just don't fucking cuss each other out like you're sworn enemies. No. You are romantic lovers. Okay? Communicate properly with each other. The next point is always put money aside for emergencies. Now I fucking wish the younger me took that advice on board. I would just be like, nah, nah, it's cool, man. You know, I'll save soon. Spending pretty much all my money. I was living paycheck to paycheck. There was even a period of time where I was doing well for myself in my business. I was making quite a lot of money. I spent it all. Every fucking penny of it. I don't know how. A lot of food, coffee, going out, buying suits. I wish I would have just put in, just, you know, some money into a, a savings account for a rainy day. But the young me had an ego. Nah, I'll make it back. I'm making money as it is. Look at me. Now, some of that ego is healthy, but you also have to be, well, you know, wise, sensible. You know, the money ain't always going to be there. It might slowly disappear. Okay? Because you cannot predict for an absolute fact what's going to happen tomorrow. So always put some money aside, 50 bucks, 100, whatever your salary is, whatever income you're receiving right now, put a portion of it. I'm not going to give you a fucking percentage because I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm sure you know how much to put aside. Okay, just a small portion of your salary into a savings account so that at any point you lose your job, you've got some money to keep you going until you get an next job. Okay, the next point is only Two people truly give a fuck about you. I don't know why I paused there for a second. So what I mean is, you think a lot of people give a fuck about you. I'm here to break it to you. They don't. Get into a car accident, or God forbid if you ever get a, a serious medical condition, 
or you break your leg or whatever. I don't know. I don't fucking care what happens. See how many people show up to hospital to see you. You will be staggered. You thought, yeah, man, all my mates will come. Maybe one will come. The rest will be like, oh, sorry, man, I've got work. Sorry, man, you know, I'm tired. Most people don't give a fuck. I'll be honest with you, even some of your boys. Truly, you've only got about one or two, maybe three real friends that will be there no matter what. Okay? The rest, pretenders. Yeah, they'll fist bump you, they'll play FIFA with you. They may buy you a coffee once a year. But people that truly give a fuck and will be there no matter what and be willing to fight with you if you ever get into a street fight, the amount of pussies out there that will run away in a situation like that, you will be shocked. And some of these dudes that are big and look intimidating, they're the first to run. Oh no, let's just... Imagine that. Some of you guys have fucking weak men in your circle. Weasels. Weeds that need to be eliminated. That don't have your back. They're just enjoying the ride. They just enjoy having leisure time with you. But when the rubber meets the road, when it gets down to it and you've got to get dirty, these men fucking run away. Look, I'm not going to put my hand up and say, you know what, I'm the strongest man to have ever existed on this planet. Okay, I'm not the best fighter. Okay, even though I do, of course, practice a combat sport. Okay, and I'd like to think I'm a strong opponent. But I am the kind of friend that will be willing at any given moment to defend your fucking back. Because I have honor and integrity. Friendships mean something to me. For a lot of people, it means fuck all. For me, it means something. You have my back, I have yours. I don't give a fuck what happens. We're in a dark alleyway, two guys charging at us with machetes. Me and you have to fucking figure something out. Okay? And I'm not leaving you behind. That's the mindset. Okay? So the majority of people don't give a fuck about you. You really only have two people in your life that are there for you no matter what. Number seven, true progress takes years. This is what I always emphasize on the channel because a lot of guys have that 30 day mindset. Oh yeah, man, I just wanna, man, I can't wait within 30 days, I'm gonna, nah. Sorry to break it to you, my love. Okay, it's not how it works. It takes fucking time, years. Well, I always like to use a decade as a good sort of base point. 10 years to, be, to completely master a craft and become great at it and to start earning good money. Not 30 days, not all oh, safe moon. Fuck all that bullshit. Master your craft. And then a bonus point, point number eight, the process is boring. Now listen, you might be thinking, Ali, but Ali, you talk about following your purpose. That's true. But what I mean by this point is the day-to-day -day grind is often monotonous and repetitive. And as human beings, we often get dissatisfied. We feel bored because it's a routine. And I'm just here to tell you, man, you're not gonna love everything about what you do. That's just facts. Do I enjoy standing and recording videos and pressing the button and then editing it for about half an hour? That part I don't enjoy. I enjoy helping people, which is the, the core reason as to why I'm doing these videos. Okay, the bigger picture is that. But the day-to-day -day monotonous turning on the light, I'm standing in front of a huge fucking light right now and it's overheating and it's making my fucking room hot, right? Do I enjoy everything about the process? No, the process is often boring. But that's where the discipline kicks in. Discipline is doing it regardless of how you feel, okay? Even if it is boring or you're not enjoying it, you get it done, I'm sorry, it is what it is. If you wanna succeed, is that what you want? Great, then fucking do it regardless of how you feel, okay? Hopefully these uh, tips have helped you out right there. I'm gonna take this blazer off and fucking jump in the shower because I am boiling right now. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe down below if you're new here and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace and love.